What is going on, my online poker players? Okay, I've got an update today showing that sometimes playing online poker can involve both luck and skill in the short term anyways. But if you withstand the variance and not get emotional about the tough losses and learn to accept that they happen and just play through them, then that's when the breakthrough is going to happen. Because for me, I'm in my 30s now, but in my 20s, I would definitely get upset about losses and sometimes let them drag on in my head for days, which is not what a winning player does. Now, when I take a loss, I just brush it off. And what I really care about is if I actually outplayed my opponent or got unlucky or if I just played like crap and lost. It's the playing like crap and losing that actually bothers me, not when I'm playing good and it's more of an unlucky variance issue, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, anyways, I do have uh, you know two different sessions combined in this with about, I don't know, maybe like eight to 10 hands total. You're gonna see a situation where skill prevailed in another situation where I just got unlucky. Um, of course, these hands were once again played on Ignition Poker, which is one of the main sites I've been playing on for years. You know, the software is excellent and the players are fairly easy to beat at these mid-state games. You know, if you guys would like to get started on here, there will be some bonus links you can check out directly below in the description and comments. You can also get on our poker newsletter or join our community as well. Please tap that like and let's get into these hands. And I'm actually kind of excited to show you guys these, uh, you know, kind of like two different spots because uh, what's interesting here is um, it's it's almost going to be like one after another, right? And, uh, you know, I, I do... Um, you know, I've been there, guys. I, I've been there when, you know, the tough loss happens, which you're going to see here. But, you know, playing through it and just not letting it get in your head is something that, you know, you need to get good at if you want to take this more seriously. And it's not just online poker. It's live poker. You know, I just prefer online. It's just more fast paced and um, it's more convenient. I've got nothing against live poker. I, I did play some 510 uh, No Limit recently. Probably like, I think maybe like three months ago now, maybe like three or four months ago. So not too recent, but you know, um, if I'm going to play live poker, the stakes got to be, you know, at least 5-10. It's not like I'm going to play a 1-2 game live. It's just, or even 2-5. It's got to be 5-10. You know, it's just different. Um, but with online, you know, you can just play a couple tables at a time at 1-2 or 2-5 and, you know, make a decent return on your investment of time playing, you know, if you do this right. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't do it right, <laughs> get emotional, make bad decisions. And then, you know, that that's, uh, that's all she wrote. And then you end up redepositing and the, the frustration just continues. Um, which kind of just segues, uh, you know, into, um, if you guys do want some one-on-one -on -one help, like I said, we did launch a community. So, um, definitely, you know, check it out. Uh, you can talk to me. Um, and there's just some good stuff in there. We can go over hands and just situations, stakes you're playing and all that. But, um, yeah. Okay. All right, we got a raise on in this spot, huh? Okay, so I was actually playing pretty good in this, like to start things off, you know, not doing anything out of the ordinary. Now, I had an ace queen of diamonds here, and check this out. So we have an open raiser. I think he's going to go to like 10 bucks. The problem here is two players are going to call after him. Um, now, if I just call with my hand, that's really not going to be the best play. Uh, sure, we could be up against hands like ace, king. Pocket ace is a lot less likely because we have an ace, pocket kings. But this guy could also just be raising with like a mid pocket pair, maybe like a weird suited connector like jack 10 or 10 9 and just kind of like mixing it up. An open raise to 10 bucks at 1 2 is definitely a little bit fishy. But, you know, because we're suited here to, you know, basically protect our equity, I guess you could say, and get some of these other players out of hand. I raise it up to 50, which I think was a really good uh, three bet here. You know, it, it would be a substantial raise for any of these players to call and you're going to get a lot, you're going to get at least two of them out of the hand, maybe one calls, and that's going to definitely help protect your hand, especially if people are trying to make calls with, you know, like pocket sevens or sixes, hands like that. They're that trying to see a flop for cheap. Um, I, I think that was definitely the right play right there. And yeah, it uh it worked out because we got everybody to fold. Okay, so right after this hand, <clears throat> we are gonna have a uh a, a big one. So um, but yeah, pocket fives just uh gonna be calling this raise in the big blind pretty standard. 
not going to be like a the greatest flop for fives, I think, on this, but not like a terrible one. And we're just going to basically go heads up against, uh, you know, one other player. But I just wanted to get, I just wanted to show you guys, like, you could be having a really good session to start and then things could just go to absolute shit. <laughs> it's pretty normal. It does happen. You know what I'm saying? And you could do everything right and still lose. And that's just, like, the brutal part about poker, but it's also, like, what makes it fun, right? You know, can you deal with it and still play good? Not a lot of people can. All right, so uh, pocket five is actually not looking bad here. We're ahead of a lot of hands, like ace, jack, queen, queen, jack, um, ace, queen. Six on the river was good, too. Uh, you know, I'm thinking our hand here has definitely got some good showdown value. We actually took it down just checking it, so... You know, no idea what that guy had, but that one worked out for us. All right, now on to the hand that didn't work out for us. Um, and I slowed this one down so we could kind of just go over it. Pocket queens. All right, so pocket queens in the big blind. Um, good spot to be in. Definitely uh, uh, almost like a disguised hand in the big blind. And uh, we have some, we're going to have an early position opener here, razor, whatever. I think it's player six that's going to open raise this. But I, like I said, I just slowed it down because, um, yeah, I just want to go over my thought process on this. But pocket queens, you know, clearly uh, you're not going to be up against a whole lot worse than this. You still have kings and aces to watch out for. But a lot of times people will still jam with like an ace-king offsuit. I see it all the time you know, playing these games. So, <clears throat> you know, um, you, don't you don't really know. It it's hard sometimes to get a read when you're playing online. But you still got to play aggressive with, with this kind of hand. <clears throat> you have to three bet it, right? You, you, have, to, you have to open open this up a little bit, especially if you get a, a few people calling in you know, an early position raiser. It's another situation you want to protect your equity. You don't want to just make a call and have like four people see a flop because <clears throat> that's definitely just going to hurt. It's just going to hurt uh, your hand and more possibilities for other players to make hands with like, you know, there's seven, six suiteds, low pocket pairs where they sneak in a set. So three betting, you know, it gets a lot of the garbage out there. You could isolate against another player, maybe two, um, and still be looking pretty good going to a flop, especially with queens, right? I mean, queens is super strong. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, you could see what we've got three players they called this raise here. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to, you know, boost it up, which I did. And I was trying to figure out the correct sizing for this. And I settled it around like 25 or 26, something like that. And um, yeah, that, and kind of what happened next was, uh, yeah, not unexpected, I guess. Like, you know, if we're in a spot here, we're up against aces or kings, it is what it is, but I'm not really feeling like that's the situation anyways. I'm just not feeling it, but yeah, we are going to end up getting it all in here. And uh, yeah, I, I think um, this, this this situation, maybe not like shock you guys. I've seen players do some crazy things. So it's not like what you're going to see here to me is like out of the ordinary. I mean, you see, you see stuff like this all the time. And, you know, sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. Like, there's no way I was folding here. So we are going to make the call and uh, just get ready for this this spiciness, I guess you could say. All right, Pocket Jacks, we are a huge favorite going to the flop. And the flop is, we are not a huge favorite anymore, okay? Uh, we got out flopped with the worst hand, you know. Um, turn card was actually pretty good. Uh, it did give us a diamond draw, you know, or we could hit the queen. Unfortunately for us, we are not going to get there, and we took a rough one right there, which really sucked, okay? But here's the thing. I played through it. You know, I rebought in, and, you know, we're going to see something happen here, which is not really remarkable, but this is just one of those uh, examples of, you know, kind of just playing through, you know, a rough beat, because that is a rough beat. A lot of people might just throw their, you know, throw their uh, their phone, if they're playing on their phone, or throw their computer, their laptop, whatever, but, you know, I just kept it together, just rebought, um, stuck to the script, and, um, you know, just continued to do our thing here. And, uh, you know, we are going to have a spot here where we're basically just going to get our losses back and, you know, just kind of move on. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so get ready for it. I'm not going to give away the hand just yet. You got to wait and see. 
but yeah, I mean, this, this it really com- comes down to like, you know, is online poker skill or luck? Is live poker skill or luck? You're going to be dealing with situations where skill doesn't work out and sometimes you get unlucky and then vice versa. Sometimes, you know, you're not playing good and you get lucky against the skilled player. I just think that's what make po- that's what makes playing poker fun. But if you learn to accept this and, you know, just learn to control your emotions at the table, man, it really is the separator from everybody else, right? Um, you know, not doing silly things like, you know, going to play some slot games or sport bet with your poker bankroll or, you know, um, and, and sometimes too, like if you can't handle a beat, maybe just quit for the day. It's the thing is like, it takes time to get good at these things. Like I said, in my twenties, I was not there. Uh, I, I kind of was, it took me until my thirties to really just like hone in on everything, get a little bit wiser about what was going on and, you know, t- take this more seriously. Like, I don't play professionally or anything, but I I play, you know, three or four, sometimes five times a week lately. Keep my sessions a little bit shorter and, um, and yeah. All right, so here we go. Pocket sixes, uh, you know, this is, um, yeah, what what else can I say here? Uh, we just want to hit a six, basically, right? That's what we're looking for. Uh, just get a set, you know, um, hunting for that set, if you will. Nice thing about this too, it's a pretty small raise to make this call. And uh, yeah, we hit the bingo on the, on the flop here. Now, really, um, you know, we're hoping that we continue to get some low cards on the turn here. If somebody's got a hand like King Queen, King Jack, King 10, those are all hands that are going to be really hard to get away from, especially if we get a bunch of low cards coming here. Uh, and really, all I can say is this hand worked out for us, okay? Um, I'm, I'm going to basically play it to perfection, but it's not like I had to do a whole lot here. I mean, we flopped a boat, you know, and, you know, we're basically like cooling a lot of those King X hands, King Queen, King Jack, King 10. Um, and this, this stuff happens, right? And I think I played this hand skillfully, which is going to lead to, you know, getting that loss back. But, you know, I, I think this was a good one to show you guys so you could kind of see like there's just so many ups and downs to playing online poker. It's just, you know, it takes time to get good at looking at this like is a long-term thing, not getting upset or letting it ruin your day when you do take a loss and just realizing you just need to get back on the horse, man, and just play through it and uh, just try to improve. And, you know, just accept that variance is a part of this if you want to take this game more seriously. Now, the turn card was a good one. King eight, the eight's not really going to change anything here. If this guy's still got like King 10, King Jack, King Queen, you know, he's never getting away here. And that's basically how we got him. Okay, anyways, um, hope you enjoyed another one here. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, it is time to subscribe. You know, putting out you know, basically three to four videos a week here. Get on that newsletter, join the community. Tap that like if you made it to the end. Thanks for watching this, guys. We'll see you all in the next poker video.